main leaders, mainstream leaders in Israel today, openly on air, on broadcast, say we should wipe out Gaza. Two million Palestinians, they're calling for genocide. It's a genocidal tendency within Israel at the mainstream. We're not talking about the fringe. The, fr the fringe is in, 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 the, in the Knesset. The fringe is in the uh, uh, Israeli cabinet. It's no longer a fringe. Uh, the, the entire spectrum in Israel has shifted to the far right and to the fascist right. Today, fascist parties are represented in the Knesset openly, without any problem. And they played a very important role in the repression, in the, in the murderous repression in Al-Aqsa Mosque, in Sheikh Jarrah, and everywhere else. Uh, they were involved in this. So the, the parallel track is our Israeli partners, our progressive anti-Zionist Jewish Israelis, are working within Israeli society to win support for a better future for everyone. They're saying other than our internationalist solidarity, our, other than our principled standing with the Palestinians, as we are the oppressors, we want to end oppression. It's good for the Palestinians, but it's also good for us. An average Israeli today thinks where his or her children will serve in the army, how many Arabs they will kill. This is the dinner discussion, because they all serve in the army, ultimately. Is that a life that anyone wants? Wouldn't a normal Israeli want to have a normal life? A normal life does not come until you, until you end oppression. So pressure from within and pressure from without. Uh, 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 this, this internal resistance, as well as very meaningful solidarity, as happened in South Africa, together they can push more and more Israelis to the progressive anti-Zionist camp. Was it not uh, Georg Hegel who said that no people can be free if they enslave another? Um, this is yet another reincarnation of that dictum. Uh, Omar, the standard argument from the Israeli side or pro-Israel state uh, commentators is that uh, the Palestinians have failed to um, represent themselves. They point to the divisions between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, to the loss of authority of the Palestinian Authority within the West Bank. Uh, I was listening to a BBC Radio 4 program, and I usually like that particular program, and they had an analysis of Hamas, which was striking to me. I mean, I just heard it this morning, and I was completely struck by the capacity of the BBC to be completely objective, to say nothing which is wrong, and yet to present a completely false picture. <laughs> <laughs> on the basis of you know, many truths that are put together. The one thing they forgot to add to the story, it was a story of Hamas, how it came, they completely neglected to mention that the Israeli state, state assassinated every leader that reached out to them um, and humiliated those who, whom they didn't assassinate. And therefore, you know, that if Hamas is getting stronger, uh, and the Palestinian Authority is uh, is losing its uh, grip on the situation. Um, this has to do with a very concerted effort by the Israeli state, the fact that to annul um, legitimate um, Palestinian representatives mm -hmm. of a humanist position. Well, those who say we cannot stand with the Palestinians because they're divided, this is as old as colonialism. This is from the beginning of history of colonialism. They've always used that uh, against indigenous populations. Yeah, they're divided, they don't agree, they, they're not worthy of democracy uh, and self-rule. You know, we, the white West, have to civilize them and we have to rule over them because we are humans and they're subhumans, or what I call relative humans. Uh, so this is as old as, as uh, the history of colonialism. And Israel as a, a, a settler colony that has gained a lot from European settler colonialism, that's where Zionism grew as a settler colon, colonial ideology. They bring the same language. Ah, the Palestinians are divided. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve that. Uh, but again, to end the system, we've got to end complicity. And in the European case, this means a military embargo. This means at the very least, suspending the EU-Israel Association Agreement, because Europe considers, yeah, the US is the naughty one, right? It's the partnering, it's sending Israel all these weapons. Well, so is Germany, so is the UK, so is France. They're all guilty. The EU is also a partner in crime, but unlike the US, which is honest, 
It's a partner in crime and it's honest about it. The EU is a hypocrite. The European hypocrisy is raised to the level of art. It's unbelievable to talk about human rights. We also yeah. buy military technologies from Israel. Buying huh? and selling buy and, and, military, and military funding, technologies funding the military research, Yanis. Hundreds yeah. of millions of do European tax dollars are spent on Israeli research to develop weapons that are field tested on Palestinians. How more criminal can the EU get? And the gas projects and the buying settlement goods. The EU imports hundreds of millions of dollars of settlement goods, let alone Israeli goods. Settlement goods 